In this recording, I want to go through immutability and look at, in particular, record or records. Um, if you head over to the Facebook Gig GitHub website, you can see a very short page that explains what they are. Uh, if you copy and paste these samples, they will work. But if you look at them, they can be quite um, confusing if you, you don't know what they are already. So, for instance, we you know, we've got a new record, which is a record, but there's no uh, new instance. Then we've got uh, an item which has a new against our new record, which all looks a bit strange. We've got A there, B there, and only B there, so what's what's going on? We've also got these extra things which are removing. So what I want to do is um, create a tutorial that shows you what they are, and then go into a bit more detail about the, the inner workings of them. So I'm going to head over to a test I've got set up um, in one of my IDEs. And what I want to do is that given we have an immutable record, then the record should hold a particular value. And when we update that value, then we should have a new object with that value. So what I want to do first off is create my new um, immutable record. So uh, person. Immutable equals immutable record. And um, what we have to do is we have to set it up with some kind of construct or some interface, if you like. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a person object with the first name of Gary. And obviously a surname if I can type. Uh, Taylor. I've obviously got all that hideously wrong. Bear with me one sec. So now I've done that, I can actually pass person in. Notice I've got an uppercase there. Uh, for the diehards, basically, don't worry. It's because when I've got the person there, I don't intend to use it. I've only ever set up this variable so that I can actually pass it in to my uh, immutable record. So what I want to do now is create an instance of that. So one equals new person immutable. So now I've done that, uh, if I go down to my next block, which is my test, to make sure that we've got a value, I should be able to assert um, that this is equal so got person one uh, first name and we're expecting that to be gary i'm just gonna run that and brilliant we can see that that's working so now we know that first name has got gary just put XX in there to test. And you can see there that it's XXX that failed as you'd expect. So we can, well, I'm just double checking that it does actually hold the value I, I were expecting it to hold. So that's the first start of that test, which means I've constructed this correctly. I could actually go a bit further and make sure that the surname is right as well. Yeah, we're up and running. So when we update um, the first name, one of the things you've got to be careful of when you're trying to update immutable objects is that I can't just say person one dot first name uh, equals Bob because that's not going to work because we can't mutate that data in fact that would throw an error so what we have to do is we have to create a new object every time And from this, what we can do is we can actually take um, uh, the person that we want to copy. So that's person one. And we can set 
the first name. Be Bob. So if we look at this, then we should be able to say um, assert that it will equal the person to so first name is actually equal to Bob. If I have a look at that and run that. Should see that that's true. Um, I always just do this just to make sure that I'm not getting the um, passing test by mistake. Or false positives, I think, is the correct terminology. So we can see there that yeah, we were definitely getting Bob. But what I also want to do is I want to check to make sure that. Person one and person two are not the same object, they're different objects. And that's failed as I expected. If we look at the details, we can see that they're they're definitely not the same. They're a completely different object. So let's get that to a passing test. And there we go, we've got a passing test. So what we've done is we've set up this uh, person object. And key thing to note here is that this immutable record here is setting up a interface, if you like, a kind of construct of what this record looks like. And we're saying that this is going to look like that and what I'm doing here is I'm creating an instance of an immutable object that looks like that so you can't actually use this directly because that actually is a function you've got to create a new instance of that to create the person one object which is why if we look at the website you it's in two steps you've got this far uh, a B record and then we're creating a new instance because that's creating what it looks like how it is what 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 have you got I've got a and B right okay now you've got a and B what do you want well, I want to create a new instance of this by the way I want you to override B to be equal to three so that will then be a new thing that you can play away with so that's where we can do this get and set and and, and access variables in that way you can see that you can even use the shortcuts where you can just do dots where there's also a get syntax as well and now that's set up you can do these shortcuts which allows you to set the variables and when that's happening it's creating a new instance of an object so that and that are two completely different objects because you're not allowed to change something it is therefore um, immutable and just to hopefully prove this so I don't make a mess don't know why I'm putting so much effort into trying to spell that right back fingers tonight if I run that it should throw an exception yeah and basically saying that we can't set on a, a mutable record we're not allowed to do that we can't change it it's immutable hence the name of the library but this gives you something very close to an object with variables it gives you something very close to what you used to dealing with and this is a really nice starter for people who are used to objects and are used to having this ability to do get and set and be able to access the property directly this is a, a really nice starting point but once you got used to this everything else is, is pretty simple in a couple of tutorials I'm going to go through some of the things that you can do with this